Good morning all friends. This is Professor Sheetal Varu, KIT College of Engineering, Kolhapur. Today we will be starting with the topic of advanced surveying. We have already learned engineering survey as a basic uh, tool for surveying. So we will be now moving on to a more advanced topic. Our first uh, topic under the advanced surveying will be tachymetry. Okay, and what we will be learning in this, we will be learning principles of and methods of tachymetry. Now let us first have a overview of, about this course. Our advanced surveying course is uh, is the course where we learn tachymetry and uh, tachymetric principles, instruments, tachymeter and tachymetry. We learn about traversing. We learn about curve setting methods. We determine surveying of larger areas by method of triangulation. This we also call it as a geodetic surveying. And uh, we pursue higher methods of surveying like remote sensing, uh, GIS, and uh, aerial photogrammetry. In addition to that, we also will be learning drone surveying. When we look at uh, the overview of the first unit or the first lesson uh, of the unit, we will be looking at uh, six basic subheads. One will be the tachymetric definitions and principle and uses. Second, we will be learning about the tachymetric instrument, what in, which is the instrument which is used for tachymetry. We will also be looking at the different systems of tachymetric. We will basically be looking at the classifications. What are the different methods are which make up the tachymetry. Then uh, in this, uh, we will be looking at the methods which uh, have a prominent uh, uh, lookout that is uh, stadia method. Uh, in the stadia methods, we will be looking at fixed air methods and movable air methods. These are basically methods which are use, which are done using the tachymeter. Now, there are other in, uh, methods as well where we do not use a tachymeter as such, we will be using the ordinary theodolite which is the vernier theodolite. In this, we will be learning the subtense and tangential systems. Then, we will be looking at some more advanced forms of tachymetry using auto reduction tachymeters. We will be learning this in detail when we go to that topic. Lastly, we will we'll be coming on to the most advanced topic which is contemporary and which is the state of the art technology presently in surveying that is the EDM machines. The EDMs were developed in the 1856, uh, sorry 1956 and now they have come to a very advanced levels and one of that tool is the total session and we will be looking at the total session and its uses. Okay, moving on, uh, we will be looking at the unit of uh, tachymetry, uh, we will be looking at the definitions. The Greek definitions uh, is popularly uh, tachymetry means quick measure, quick and speedy measurement okay, by which the instruments uh, can be used to measure horizontal distances as well as vertical distances and on the surface of the earth. But it will it will be taking uh, geodetic as well as non-geodetic uh, features also and is plane and geodetic surveying as well. This method uh, is very uh, fast and uh, convenient. It is ba basically it is popular because of its uh, capability to overcome obstacles, uh, steep grounds and deep ravines and stretches of water and it can be used in very very versatile manner. Basically it is a tool of indirect surveying. Now uh, we will be looking at, having understood uh, the basic definitions, we will look at the basic principle of uh, tachymetry. Now if you look at this, you will understand that tachymetry uh, the basic principle which governs the principles of tachymetry is that it is based on the principle of isosceles triangle. Now we know that the two sides of the isosceles triangle are uh, similar and we have got a common base. Now the statement of this uh, principle says that the ratio of the perpendicular from the vertex of the triangle to the uh, base uh, is is constant. Okay, So if you look at this uh, ratios, if you look at the figure, the figure you can see OC2 upon A2 B2, OC1 upon A1 B1 and OC upon AB which are the uh, you can say which are bisected by the perpendicular bisectors of the isosceles triangle OC, this ratio is maintained constants and that is what is the basic crux of the tachymetry method. This method is entirely dependent on the magnitude of the angle alpha. Okay, uh, so we will be looking at now uses of tachymetry. Tachymetry, uh, why it is so popular? This method is popular because it is fast. It is, it is, uh, it can be used in very uh, adverse conditions, especially for trigonometry. It uses the uh, 
TACM, it uses uh, trigonometrical functions to uh, do indirect surveying. So, we are not directly measuring things like chains and tapes, but we are doing indirect surveying. So, the detail filling in already uh, prepared topographic maps, this is one function if the maps are prepared, you can fill this them by the topographic uh, maps. The topographic maps can be filled in by the uh, tachymetry and if you want to do survey in difficult terrains, locating contours, reconnaissance survey, checking of already measured distances, hydrographic or what, if you want to do survey in uh, water stretches, stretches of water, then this field, this method also helps very, uh, helps you. Tachymetry is also very useful in establishing secondary control. Now, what is secondary control? When you already establish horizontal control point by primary controls, then the sub did as the first point has been mentioned, it is good for filling up the details. Moving on, let us look at the instruments which are used in tachymeter. Now, <coughs> as I had mentioned in my earlier slides, tachymetry uses the tachymetry is a system. Let, let all of you please understand that we are discussing tachymetry and not tachymeter in itself. Tachymetry is a system in whole. It is a holistic uh, method which can compromise use of a tachymeter or it can also compromise methods of using ordinary theodolite which is not a tachymeter and still doing tachymetry. So, what is tachymetry? Tachymetry in the strictest sense is the method of calculating the horizontal distances and the vertical distances including the elevations with the respect of tachymetry without using direct measurements like chain and tape. Okay. So, what are the basic features? As we move on, let us see. Uh, here you can see that there is something called as a stadia diaphragm. So, we will see the pictures of the stadia diaphragm. This is the tachymeter which looks like a theodolite uh, as far as the looks are concerned. You may not uh, be able to distinguish unless you go into details of that instrument uh, in a more finer uh, way. Okay. So, stadia diagrams as I was mentioning stadia diaphragm. You can see here that the diaphragm does not consist of just a vertical hair or a cross hair, but it also consists of additionally upper hair and lower hair which are the top and bottom hair in addition to the middle hair. So, what is the function of this? This is called as the stadia, stadia diaphragm or the stadia, stadia itself. The word stadia comes from this uh, upper and lower hairs of the cross hairs. Now, you can see that there are six various uh, forms of stadia diaphragms, all of them will, one thing you can see common is that there is a vertical crosshair and there is a horizontal crosshair which is common to any theodolite. Additionally, there is also two crosshairs, one at the top and one at the bottom. Moving on, now what are the essential characteristics of a tachymeter? When we say a tachymeter, what is a tachymeter? A tachymeter is an instrument which will consist of uh, basically certain features which will mark, which will make it distinguished from the ordinary theodolite. So, a tachymeter will have something called as a multiplying constant, which is given by the ratio f upon i, where f is focal length. I have mentioned that at the bottom. So, f and i stands for focal length and shade intervals. This is the focal length of the objective lens. Now, this uh, ratio is, uh, has to be constant. Why this has to be constant? Uh, so, that uh, when we use it uh, for uh, tachymetric functions, it becomes more uh, for the calculations of distance and elevations, it becomes more easier and simpler to say, it, it simplifies the process basically. Uh, instead of having some odd uh, numerical values, 100 is a uh, value which can be more easily uh, done mathematically as well as uh, you can do it manually other than use of any tools like calculators, etc. Now, there is another tool uh, called as the analytical lens. Now, what is this analytical lens? It is an additional lens in, in a tachymeter which helps you to maintain the additive constant to 0. What is this additive constant? This additive constant, it is a sum of the focal length and the distance from the center of the focal lens to the uh, instrument, uh, foci of the instrument. Okay. So, that is another feature. Then all these instruments, tachymeters are powerful having very large magnifications because basically they are used for very long distances. So, their magnifications are very high. So, the aperture of the objective should also be high. So, it is having very large uh, apertures 35 to 45 mm unlike our ordinary uh, dumpy levels or theodolites. So, these are some uh, stadia rods uh, which are commonly used. 
Now, stadia rods are the types of rods which are not, uh, which are like the leveling stuff, but they are slightly different. If you look at the pictures, you can understand that they have got uh, engravings uh, at uh, black and white uh, way, black and white engravings, which uh, which uh, prominently brings up their features. Like when you are looking at this leveling stuff for a, from a very long distance, say about 500 meters and about 100, 1 kilometers or maybe 2 kilometers, then it may not be able to discern the normal leveling stuff. So, these leveling stuffs are very useful. Okay. So, thank you. This is, we come to the end of the lesson, uh, basics of the tachymetry. In the second lesson, what we are going to learn? Having understood the basic tachymetric principles uh, and the tachymetric instrument, we, are, we will be learning the systems of tachymeter, that is the classifications, what are the different methods and we will be going to details of that. Thank you.